Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. This is part three of three of the 2015 results for the Home Garden Field Trials, where I've been putting rock dust and charged biochar to the test. Rock dust and charged biochar are marketed to home gardeners like myself and come with quite a few claims. As such, I've decided to test them in my garden to see if these claims hold up. In order to test these products, I set up a controlled study. I started with the same base material in all three beds, and then I applied the products at the rates the advocates recommended. Rock dust to this bed, this is the control, and that is the biochar on the top. Each of the beds are independent of each other and receive the same amount of sun and the same treatment throughout the growing season. The same varieties of plants were planted in the same locations in each bed to help avoid any discrepancies. I've been asked a number of times if I would name the brand of rock dust that I used in this trial. I don't want to do that in order to avoid claims of slander and having these videos removed from YouTube. I do feel comfortable telling you that it is a brand of rock dust recommended by the biggest advocates and was applied at the same rates that the advocates have mentioned in the past. I also should mention that these beds were treated with compost and vermicompost and are extremely rich in microbial life as recommended by those same advocates. The biochar was provided by Alberta Innovates and was made from a stock of wood chip material. It was charged using the same biologically rich compost and worm castings that the rock dust and control beds also received. The only differences between these three beds is the application of charged biochar to this bed, nothing to this bed, and the rock dust product to the lower bed. What this allows us to do is to take a look and compare any differences found between the trial beds and the control and attribute that to the product itself. This really helps provide evidence that either supports or refutes the claims made about these products. The 2015 rock dust and biochar trial results were separated into three videos. In the first video, I took a look at harvest totals, and in the second video, I sampled the soil to see if there's any difference in nutrient content. After I present results from part three in this series, which is the tissue results, I will summarize the results from parts one and two to paint a more complete picture of the 2015 home garden field trials for rock dust and biochar, and summarize my conclusions from this year. Let's move on to today's claim and how I investigated it. Rock dust claims that through the addition of minerals it contains, the produce grown within it will take some up, increasing the concentration of nutrients in the crops. I would like to define nutrient density. Nutrient density is a unit of measurement that compares the caloric and non-caloric component of your food, meaning the higher your food is in trace elements and vitamins and lower in calories, the higher the nutrient density. The method that I've used to determine if there's an increase in the micronutrients of food grown within rock dust versus a control is a trace element analysis. Trace elements make up the vast majority of the micronutrients contained within produce. If rock dust does increase this, we should see a higher concentration of trace elements in the produce that's grown in rock dust when compared to the control. In order to compare today's results, I have used a real percent difference analysis with a conservative factor of 100, which is extremely conservative. Last year, I took a look at pepper tissues in order to see if there's any differences between the crops grown in rock dust versus the control. Peppers in 2014 had no notable differences when comparing crops grown in charged biochar versus the control. This result was expected, as charged biochar does not claim to increase the nutrient density of crops grown within it. Rock dust grown peppers also did not have any difference in the trace element composition when compared to the control. These results led me to think, what about other tissues? Is this just the case for peppers or other crops as well? This year I submitted samples of carrot root, beet leaf, beetroot, tomato plants, and tomato fruit from each bed to Maxim Analytics for testing. I would like to give them a big thanks for them running these samples and assisting with the results analysis. Let's start with the biochar results. For the purposes of today's video, I have not screened out any elements that may not be required in the human diet. Carrot root. There is no statistical difference between the control and the charged biochar grown carrots. Beet leaves. There was more aluminum in the charged biochar grown leaves when compared to the control. However, there is more cadmium in the control leaves versus the biochar leaves. Beet root. There was no statistical difference between the control and the biochar grown beet roots. Tomato plant. There was also no statistical difference in the elemental makeup of the plant tissue. Tomato fruit. There is more aluminum found in the controlled tomatoes when compared to the tomatoes grown in charged biochar. 
there were some minor differences in the results, but because there was no patterns that emerged, this is likely due to chance. And this was not completely unexpected, as biochar does not claim to increase the nutrient density of crops that is grown within it. Rather, it claims to hold on to more nutrients within the soil. Let's move on to the rock dust results. Carrot root, no noted differences in the micronutrients. Beet leaf, the control had more strontium than the rock dust. Beet root, higher concentrations of aluminum in the rock dust grown beet root, while higher concentrations of barium were found in the control when compared to the rock dust beet root. Tomato plant has no differences with the exception of higher sodium in the control. Tomato fruit, absolutely no differences between the control and the rock dust grown tomatoes. The rock dust results were very similar to the biochar results, with a handful of differences between the rock dust and the control simply due to likely chance as there was no patterns that emerged. It's time to summarize all of the 2015 home garden field trial results for the rock dust and charge biochar trials. Part 1 addresses the claim of higher production. In part 1, the control had the highest yield, with biochar in the middle and rock dust tailing far behind. These results do not support the claims that either of these products increase yields in home organic gardens. And part two took a look to see if through different mechanisms the claims that charged biochar and rock dust increase nutrients to the soil. In order to understand in more detail what was going on, I analyzed the soil in each bed. There was no noted differences in the nutrient levels between the trial beds and the control. Part 2's results did not support the claim that either of these products, through different mechanisms, increase the nutrient content of the soil. Today in Part 3, we established that there is no noted differences between the trace elemental makeup of pepper, tomato, carrot, and beet tissues grown in charged biochar and or rock dust when compared to a control. Consistent with Parts 1 and 2, today's results do not support the claim that produce grown in a home organic garden that is treated with rock dust will produce any difference in the nutrient density of those crops. When I look at the results for Parts 2 and 3 for the charged biochar, it's not really a surprise. Because my soil is already so good at retaining nutrients, the charged biochar just does not have the ability to increase the nutrients within the soil, hence does not have an effect on the crops grown within it. That said, these results this year do not explain why there was nearly a 10% drop in the production in this bed, but I have my suspicion. If I increased the number of trial beds comparing each other, what we would see is a leveling out overall of this statistical anomaly, and the crop rates between the two would be very, very similar. This year's results for rock dust were a little more curious. I applied rock dust at the recommended rate by the top advocates and I did not see an increase in the nutrients found within the soil, nor an increase in the nutrient density of crops grown within it. These results make a lot more sense when you take a look at the rock dust itself and the dilution factor, even when applying at these high application rates. The rock dust once applied to the soil is being diluted out, so that no significant amount of nutrients is even being added. In summary, neither rock dust nor charged biochar lived up to their product claims in a home garden that has been amended with compost and vermicompost and that is extremely biologically activated. Neither of these products increased production nor the nutrient content of soil and they did not increase the nutrient density of crops grown within it. As with all of my videos, I'll post a copy of this script for this video along with all of the references including the lab results on my website, albertaurbangarden.ca. So what's next for the home garden field trials? This year, I will be working on trials to see if I can duplicate my 2015 results, not only in my trial bed, but in a number of off-site ones. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it very much and I hope you have a fantastic day.